Hello guys, welcome back to my nursery today. Um, we're not exactly in the nursery, we are in my bedroom again. And as I said, this is where I pretty much keep my silicone dolls in my bedroom back here. Usually I take them up in the nursery when I'm doing a video up there. Um, I usually don't leave them up in the nursery. I like to keep my silicone dolls close by me where I can keep an eye on them because I do have kids and pets in my house. And my nursery is in a place where my kids go in and out of to get to the laundry room, as I said. So I don't trust them leaving my nursery open and the pets get in my nursery. So my reborns are up in the nursery, my vinyl reborns, but my silicone babies are usually in my bedroom right back here with me where I can keep my eyes on them. So these are the babies I currently have in my collection. They are all clear Taylor doll sculpts. Um, right here we have Amani and she's Willow Awake. And then right here we have Layla and she's Dwayne Awake. And right here we have Gabriel and he's Andrew. And right here we have Sage Jameson and he's the Sage. And here, last but not least, we have Little Bubbles. And Bubbles is the baby that I painted and she's still up for sale. And the way you would contact me about Bubbles, she is a silicone cuddle body baby. And you would contact me on my Instagram. And my Instagram is always underneath my videos in the description. You just click the link and it'll take you over to my Instagram if you're interested in bubbles here. Also, Sage, I painted, but he's my baby. He's not for sale. Um, so these two here, I painted Sage and Bubbles. And you can kind of see back here, like the slight difference in their color is not a drastic difference but definitely their skin tones are different um so those two i painted these three i did not um amani was painted by paula briggs she was sold as a blank kit and completed by artist paula briggs and then these two here Dwayne awake and andrew were and are addition dolls fully completed by Claire Taylor, meaning these two were all done from start to finish by Claire Taylor, meaning she sculpted them, poured them, molded them, um, painted them, and rooted their hair. She did everything to these two. So you would call them addition dolls or completed Claire Taylor dolls. These, this one here is a Claire Taylor kit meaning she was sold as a blank kit and completed by a different artist as i said paula briggs and then these two back here sage and bubbles were also sold as blank kits i completed sage by painted him i painted and rooted him and then i also painted bubbles the blank kits are molded sculpted and poured into silicone by clear taylor they are her sculpts her sculpts and then they are sold blank where you can paint them yourself or you can have an artist paint them for you. So that is just a little quick rundown of Clea Taylor's completed dolls, her addition dolls. And then you have Clea Taylor kit edition dolls. So the reason I'm back today, I want to change Layla and Amani, but I will see how that goes because I really wanted to talk about something else in this video, which is pertaining to kind of a continuation or an elaboration on the video I did last night um, about, what was the title? <laughs> I should have looked at that before I started this video. Watch my mind goes blank. Okay, what was the title of the last video?
All right, the price does, doesn't does matter. Something like to that effect. But what I'm probably going to do this time is put the um, yesterday's video. I'll put it on the end of this video. So if you haven't seen yesterday's video, you might want to go look at it. So you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about in this video. So that way you can see both videos. So I'll put it right at the end of this video. You'll see the little link, the little thumbnail. You can click it and it'll take you over to yesterday's video. All right. So the reason I'm coming back to talk about this again, um, Layla needs a bow in her hair. <laughs> Layla is a portrait baby, Dwayne Awake, which is a boy. And I feel like she looks just like the portrait of the real baby. She really, really does. And he's a boy although I have her as a girl, my little girl. So I feel like when she doesn't have a bow in her hair, she really, really looks like him, like she needs a bow. Although she's wearing pink socks, she has pink on her onesie, um, but she needs a bow. Amani has a little bow, doesn't match her clothes, her onesie, but she does have a bow. But Amani looks like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> even without a bow she's very girly she looks like a girl and then this little one back here bubbles has her bow but she's a baldy i have not rooted her hair as you can see but bubbles can to me she looks like a girl right now with that bow but she can also make a cute little boy if you take that bow off and put her into an outfit for a boy that baby can be a boy or a girl easily really cute and she's kind of the longer this baby's here she's growing on me so much because i love her face the face whether it's a boy or a girl i love the face of this baby but i have another bubbles that i'm going to be painting eventually so i didn't really want to keep two awake bubbles so this one right now is still for sale but i'm telling you i'm definitely getting kind of attached to her like every time i pick her up i just don't want to put her down but anywho Oh, and this cuddle baby has the, the silicone hands, the silicone head, of course. And then she also has the silicone feet that go to her ankle. And then her little hands go to the wrist. So that just adds to her um, real, like her realism. She looks really realistic because she has the hands and the feet along with the head. You can't even tell that her whole body basically is cloth and weighted. You know, she you can't really tell once you dress her. But anywho, getting back to my conversation. All right. So yesterday, you know, when I do these topic videos, and that's why lately I don't do a whole lot of topic videos like I used to, if you guys notice, because they usually... When you do topic videos, you have to be really careful how you word things um, because people can definitely take what you're saying and take it completely the wrong way or you don't explain it enough or it, what you're saying can get twisted up and misconstrued and you know, misunderstood and all of that. So that's why a lot of times, and I don't want to offend people when I do topic videos either. So that is why a lot of times I stay away from topic videos and especially hot topic videos. I hardly do anything lately to do with those hot topics. I try to steer clear of them because I just don't need the aggravation, the drama and all of that. I don't need it, don't want it, not here for that. So that's why a lot of times lately, I don't really do a lot of topics. But when I was talking yesterday, it was just a candid conversation. And I was basically sharing what I realize with my own personal collection and my just sharing my thoughts with you guys nothing major um you can take it with a grain of salt you might have a totally different opinion from my opinion and that's normal because we all have different ways we look at things different ways we see you know certain things so 
what I might look at in one way, you can see the same situation completely different and there's nothing wrong with that. We all have our own, you know, our own opinions. But what I was talking about was with these two babies here, my two little boys, I was saying how this baby, Gabriel Andrew, is an addition doll, all done by Clea Taylor and how much I paid for him. And at the time when I got him, he was like $6,500, $6,500. And then I was saying with Sage here, Jameson, I painted him myself. I bought the blank kit and painted and rooted him. And for the blank kits, full body silicone. And this is a full body silicone, both by Claire Taylor. They're both her sculpts. This baby blank um, without any uh features he has no armatures no drinking wet gabriel is a full body silicone with the squishy tummy ball jointed neck um older baby but at the time when i got him he was only almost two years old so he was still fairly new he was 6500 he's he held his price his his um value didn't decrease he was still 6500 just like when he was first sold his price really didn't go down so this baby i paid 2150 as a basic model as i said no extra features full body silicone soft silicone he's newer you know he has the one piece pour pour he doesn't have the ball jointed neck he's all poured in one piece he was only 2150 and then I painted him and rooted him, and he's much more affordable. Say, if a person can't afford a fully completed doll by Claire Taylor, can't afford or don't want to pay, you know, the addition doll price prices. As far as Layla, she is also a fully completed addition doll by Claire Taylor. I got Layla back in 2018. That's when she was created. I got her brand new as a custom from Claire Taylor Dolls. At that time, Claire Taylor's dolls were going for about $10,000 fully. All the bells and whistles. She had the full armatures, drinking wet system, a spine that you could feel. Also, she's the one piece pour. Her neck is flexible. Everything all poured in one piece. Um, she basically what you would say it has all the bells and whistles at that time in 2018 she was ten thousand dollars now clear taylor's dolls have definitely went up since i got layla and for me to what i paid for layla was definitely a lot what i paid for gabriel at the time when i got him definitely you know the price was up there but i always wanted a clear taylor doll so I set it as a goal for myself. I loved Claire's dolls and I had been watching them for a while. Once I discovered them, I wanted one so badly and I loved her work. Her dolls look super realistic to me. So I wanted a Claire Taylor doll, not because of the price being high and I figured, oh, this is definitely it. The prices are way up there. They must be the best because the price is so high. I have to have one. No, I didn't get the doll just because the price was up there and I felt like, oh, that's going to definitely fulfill my every dream because of the price being high. They're high and I'm going to be so in love with it just because of the price. I know I'm going to be satisfied. That is what I was talking about yesterday. Just because the price of the doll is super duper high in doesn't mean you're going to love, love, love the doll or you shouldn't buy it because you think you're gonna love it because the price is high and that is sounds a little confusing so you really have to listen to what i just said some of us could be going after the higher end dolls thinking that oh my gosh if the price is that high i gotta love it i know i'm gonna love it when i get it it costs so much it gotta be the best of the best in most cases the more you pay for something it does mean you should love it because it surely costs you enough. It should be the best of the best. That is true. And that's what I wanted to talk about more. Someone left a comment, which I did pin it, 
on under that video and she made a lot of good points and she also has Clea Taylor dolls um her silicone collection beautiful silicone collection she has and she was saying she made a point about when you pet like basically I'm gonna just sum it up to how I took it because I can't like quote word for word what she said so if you want to go see what she said you would have to go look at my pinned comment under that video yesterday and see what she said and I pinned it so it's right at the top you can't miss her comment but um basically what she was saying and I felt like I needed to come back and elaborate on this a little more is that when you pay for something you're you're like what you're paying of course the higher the price you're you're going to get the quality that you're paying for the quality of the dolls and I wanted to definitely come back and and talk about that a little bit because I don't want anyone to think I'm saying that you can get a less expensive doll, like say this one that I painted for myself and paid less. And you're overlooking, like you're just going after it because it's less. And then you're not really paying attention to the quality. I'm never telling you to get something that's less and it's not of quality. Of course, and I'm also not saying that these dolls, because I pay thousands for them, way more than my other dolls, that these lack quality or that they are not worth every penny that I pay for them or every thousand that I pay for them, let me say. Definitely what I pay for these babies, they're definitely worth what I pay for them, if not more. I love Layla. She's um she just turned four years old this past June. So I actually need to do a video with her. I didn't really do a like a birthday video with her this time. But on July 6th was her fourth birthday because she was done created on July 6th of 2018. She is like in pristine condition, just as when I got her. This baby was created back in 2015. He is now seven years old. I had him since June of 2017. I've had him for five years now. He is in pristine condition for a seven-year-old silicone doll. So I want to say that Claire Taylor's dolls are high in. They're very expensive. They are high in price. But definitely they're worth what you're paying for them. You're definitely getting the quality her dolls her reputation speaks for itself i've had her older dolls her newer dolls her dolls hold up over you know over time so when you're paying all of this money for her dolls it, i'm not saying they're not worth it they're worth every cent every thousand like i said that i paid for them just looking at them you know they are in pristine condition so when you put out the money for her dolls you're definitely going to get the quality that you're you're looking for and paying for in that doll her dolls don't just fall apart they last and stand over time their paint you know it stays on the dolls their hair he has his original hair she has her original hair they hold up over time. So definitely they are worth everything that I pay for them. I adore both of these babies. So when I'm saying that the price doesn't matter, I was more referring to when you fall in love with a doll or you see a doll and it, you just love it. You have to have it. It pulls at your heartstrings and it doesn't necessarily have to be the most highest and expensive doll for you to love it. That's what I was saying. Not so much I was talking about the quality of the dolls, but since someone brought that up in their comment, I wanted to definitely come back and clarify that part. This baby here and this one, they are more affordable. I painted them. They cost me less because I painted them. And also the blank silicone kits that Clea Taylor sells, they cost less because she's selling them blank. She sells blank kits so that 
people or collectors can have one of her sculpts in their collection if they cannot afford to go after her edition dolls. And I'm happy she does that because although I have Claire Taylor's edition dolls and I've had many of them over the years at this point, not all the time can I go after a brand new edition doll. So when she creates these you know, blanks. And even if another artist paints them, it's still half the price of what I would pay for an edition doll or a quarter now of the price of what I would pay for an edition doll fully completed by Claire Taylor. Even when another artist paints it, it's still maybe for me and the next collector more affordable for us to buy one that sold from a kit edition by Claire Taylor and you're still getting her realistic sculpting, you're getting her beautiful sculpt and her lovely silicone pour mix. You're getting all of that, but you're going to have it where another artist finishes it, where they paint it, they root the hair, or you do it yourself. And it's still going to save you a little money, well, a lot of money, than if you were buying a fully completed doll by Claire Taylor. So you get into still enjoy one of her dolls, but you, you know, it won't be fully completed by her. And she did that so that more collectors could, you know, afford to have one of her dolls in their collection. And as I said, I love Sage so much. I love this baby so much, but he's not perfect. I painted him. I'm still learning. I'm still new to silicone painting, but yet I can still love this baby enjoy him and he did not cost anywhere as much as these two that's what i was saying the price is not necessarily always going to guarantee that you're going to love the baby because you paid so much for it that's not going to guarantee because you could get a high price baby get it home and you don't fall in love with it and it's nothing wrong with it sometimes it's of good quality you paid the money for it you get it home and you don't bond with that doll you end up selling it. I've seen that happen many times where collectors have actually gotten a Claire Taylor doll sometime or another high-end artist, not just Claire Taylor, and they get the doll home and they end up selling it right away. They didn't fall in love with it. So that's what I was saying. Don't just go after something because it's high price and you're thinking you're going to love it because it's high, you know, the, the price of it. And meanwhile, you still have to love the doll itself, not just because it costs more you think you're going to love it. You have to have some type of like something that pulls at your heartstring and makes you want that doll. Like when I first saw the Dwayne um, sculpt, when it first came out, I wanted that Dwayne. Like I looked at the face, I looked at the eyes, I fell in love with the Dwayne sculpt immediately and I wanted it. So it didn't matter that, oh my gosh, it's high end, it costs a lot, it's a Claire Taylor doll, I want it. That's not what I was looking for. Yes, I love Claire Taylor's work, love her painting, her silicone, you know, it feels amazing. But I also had to like fall in love with the doll when I saw it. I had to want that particular, this particular doll. Like when I saw him, I didn't know a whole lot about Claire Taylor when I first saw this baby. I was just learning of her dolls, but I fell in love with this baby from the first time I seen him. So it also, like I, for me anyway, I have to go after a doll because I love the doll. Whether it's a Claire Taylor doll or whatever doll I'm looking at, I have to feel some type of connection that's drawing me into the doll. Not just the price of the doll, not just because who the artist or sculptor is like Claire Taylor. That's kind of a name. It is a name brand with the silicone dolls. Um, but I don't just go after the doll just because of the name or the high end price of it, or just to say, Oh, I got a Claire Taylor doll. No, I have to really want that doll. Like I love the face on the sages. I love the awake sage and the asleep. Like I have to have some connection to the doll and want the doll so when i'm spending my money on it it's worth what i'm spending whatever the price is because i love the doll so that's what i was saying but definitely claire's dolls are of high quality 
they're worth what you pay for them when you do buy her edition dolls. I have no like discrepancy or disputing that in any way. Her dolls are definitely worth what you're paying for them. If you can afford them, you know, they are definitely worth what you're paying. But say if you can't afford them, and I hear so many people when they comment under my videos or they message me and they say they wish they could have a Claire Taylor doll, but they just can't afford one. They can, they'll say they can never have one. Um, so I feel for people when they say that because I was there at one point, didn't know how I could get a Claire Taylor doll and I really wanted one, love her dolls, but I was not ever saying, oh, I can never get one. It just made me strive to get one because I really, it was something I really wanted. So I just figured out ways that I could go about getting one of her dolls because they are so realistic. They look like real babies. Her work is beautiful. Her silicone feels amazing, like I said. And I wanted one of her dolls, and I wasn't going to give up until I got one. And at this point, um, collecting now for eight and a half years, um, I got my first clear telescope. I believe it was back in 2016, and it was a partial Zen um, Asleep I got first. And I got him off the secondary market. And that is where I started. And from 2016 to now, 2022, I, I've had at least 25 Claire Taylor dolls, if not more. So I definitely, I just wanted one, but I definitely exceeded the one um, at this point. And now I'm starting to paint for myself. So I'm hoping I can get more of her blank kits to paint and add into my collection and love them as well. So basically, it doesn't have to be Claire Taylor I'm talking about either. It could be any artist that you're like admiring their work and you want one of their dolls. Um, go after what you love because you really love it is what I'm saying. And also, you want something of quality. And at the same time, if you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, you want to like stay within your budget if you can and love what you're buying and when you pay the money for it you feel good about what you're bringing home don't just go after something because of the name or oh it's high end i'm paying a lot i'm gonna love it and then you get it home after you spent all that money and it, you might not actually love it so it can't just be about the name of the artist or the price it has to be more than that when you say you love a doll and you want to enjoy it. And also some people pay a lot for a doll and they actually love it, but they don't enjoy it because then they don't, they're not comfortable when they overspent for the doll. They went out of their budget. So it's like so many different factors to kind of think about before you start buying your dolls, different things you're looking for in the doll. Of course, you want a doll of quality, but at the same time, you can shop within your budget and find a doll that is of quality that you can still love it and enjoy it. And you didn't pay, you know, a, a down payment on a house for it, or you bought like is is it equal to buying a new car? <laughs> you know, you you don't have to like spend so much to be happy is what I'm saying. You can shop around, do your research, you know, be careful and know what you're buying. Get something nice, a nice doll. And not necessarily you always have to spend an arm and a leg to say you're going to love it or enjoy it. And you can still find dolls within your budget and they're affordable and they're still also of quality. And that's what I wanted to say. If you guys can understand where I'm coming from with that. Um, so that is all for this video. I'm not, as I did not change them, I wanted to kind of stay focused on what I was talking about. And I probably still left off some stuff, but I'll continue it in another video. I'll talk about next um, different options when you're wanting a certain kind of doll and your budget is limited. I'll talk about that in another video and I probably will change these two girls in that video. 
So that's all for now, guys. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. I hope I clarified if anybody was confused. Um, but I definitely wanted to come back and state that these babies, I love them. And they are definitely high quality. They are worth everything I pay for them. Every, you know, every thousand I pay for them. They are definitely worth it. So I definitely wanted to clear that up. I have no regrets on what I spent on them. Not at all. And who knows in the future, I may be blessed enough to bring home another fully completed Clear Taylor doll. Who knows? But in the meantime, I, I like that I can paint for myself now. And if I can't get a completed doll, I'm definitely open to getting more blank, you know, kits and painting them and I can enjoy them as well. That's all I'm saying. Explore, explore your options. And also, if someone else paints a blank kit and I love it, I can go that route as well because it's more, you know, more into my budget. So anyway, take care, guys. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.